you all uh, to this recording. Uh, my name is uh, Nalungu F.I. Uh, I will be uh, presenting to you today uh, Industrial Electronics N4. Uh, the chapter that we'll be dealing with uh, is diode application. So we'll be doing diode application together. Yeah. So as you can see, I have uh, all the definitions. Uh, they are already written on the board, right? So we're dealing with diode application. And uh, I believe that you guys, you have gone through some applications of the diode in your, in your lower levels, like uh, industrial electronics N3, because here we will be doing uh, industrial electronics N4. So I believe that uh, you have done uh, a, a diode as a clipper, right, in your previous studies in N3. So uh, today, what uh, we are going to be looking at is we are going to be looking at a diode as a, as a rectifier, right? So now, what is a rectifier? You can see the definition is on the board. A rectifier is an electronic device which converts alternating quantity into DC quantity by allowing current to flow through it in one direction. So that is a rectifier, right? A device that converts AC quantity into DC quantity by allowing current to flow through it in, in one direction, right? So, I said we will be looking at a diode as a rectifier. Now, before we get to that, let's look at the definition, or let's remind ourselves uh, about uh, the definition of a diode. What is a diode? Now, the definition is on the board. Let's read it together. So, uh, a diode is a semiconductor with two terminals, typically allowing current to flow through it in one direction. We can see the definition. Let's read it again. A diode is a semiconductor with two terminals. I believe you still remember the two terminals. We have the cathode and the anode, right? The cathode uh, is uh, the one that is negative and uh, the anode is the one that is positive. So we say it's a semiconductor with two terminals, typically allowing current to flow through it in, in one direction, right? Well, now, let's check the definition of a semiconductor. We know about a semiconductor. In simple terms, let's just talk about a semiconductor, but let's not complicate things, right? Well, a semiconductor is actually a material that can behave as a good conductor, right? Or a good insulator, right? That is a semiconductor, right? So it can operate as a good conductor under certain conditions, right? Under other conditions, it can operate as a good insulator. So that's what a, 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 a semiconductor, that is the definition of a, of a semiconductor. So let's look at, at this diode. Let's look at this diode. Now, this diode is a semiconductor. We know that it can, uh, it's either it operates or it conducts electricity, or it can uh, operate as an insulator, meaning that it blocks the flow of, of current. Now, well, this diode, as you can see, we talk about its terminals. We said it has the positive terminal, right? This is the positive terminal of the diode. This is the negative terminal of the diode. And we said that the positive terminal is called the anode. So we have the anode, right? And the negative terminal is called the cathode. You have the cathode and the anode. Right, so this is the diode. This is the diode. And then now you have uh, now an external supply that is connected. As you can see, this line here, the, la the longer line represents the positive terminal of the external supply. And the one that is short represents uh, the negative terminal of the external supply. So uh, we have the same thing that side. This is a plus, this is a minus, and then this is now a plus, and then you have what? A minus. So you can see this is now the cathode. This is the other, right? So what we know is that now a diode uh, is a, uh, a material or a device that will uh, allow DC current to pass through, right? Because it allows current to flow through it in one direction. So it passes DC current, right? 
Good. So now let's come back. Now we have a diode uh, operating as, as as a conductor, or we have a diode conductor when uh, we connect or when we connected it in a forward bias mode. So these are the two configurations in which a diode can be connected. So we have what? The reverse bias mode, you can call it. This is reverse biasing, right? The reverse bias mode, sorry, the forward bias mode, and you also have the reverse bias mode. So this is a forward biasing, this is reverse biasing. So when you connect a diode in a forward bias mode, what you are actually doing, you are operating this diode as a conductor, right? When you now connect the same diode in a reverse bias mode, you are operating the same diode as, a, as an insulator, meaning that the diode will block uh, the flow of current. Here, in the forward bias mode, that's where the diode will allow the current to pass through, right? So, if you are then asked to uh, define a forward bias and reverse bias, you just have to check the terminals. We have the positive terminal and the negative terminal of the diode, and we have the positive terminal and the negative terminal of the external supply. So, let's check how are they connected. And the forward bias, we can see that the positive terminal which we call this positive terminal the cathode. So we can say the cathode is connected to the positive terminal of the external supply. Sorry, not the cathode, the anode. The positive terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the external supply. And then the negative terminal, which is the cathode, is connected to the negative terminal of the external supply. So this is forward bias. This uh, diode will therefore allow current to pass through because the diode allows current to pass through in that direction, in a forward bias mode, right? So you have the anode connected to the positive terminal of the external supply and the cathode connected to the negative terminal of the external supply. So it's positive to positive, negative to negative. This is forward biasing. The diode conducts, right? So if you want the diode to conduct, to conduct, you connect it in the forward bias mode, right? So under the reverse bias mode, so if you want this diode to uh, now operate as an insulator, now we just have to change the direction of the diode. We know that current flows conventional from positive to, to negative. So we then expect this battery to produce current uh, in that direction, right? But then we know that a diode will only allow current to flow through it in that direction. And it will block the flow of current in the opposite direction, right? It cannot take in current. So in this, if uh, you are going to connect a diode in a reverse bias mode, Right? Or when we talk about reverse biasing, it's where you connect the negative terminal of uh, the diode to the positive terminal of the external supply, and then you have the positive terminal, which is the anode of the diode, connected to the negative terminal of the external supply. So it's positive to negative, negative to positive. This is reverse biasing. The diode does not conduct. So this diode now operates uh, as an insulator, right? Under the reverse bias mode. It operates as what? An insulator. So if you want this diode to conduct for any purpose, uh, you have to then now connect it in a forward bias mode, not the reverse bias reverse bias mode if you want the diode to conduct. So in a forward bias mode, that's where the diode is used as what? As a, as a conductor. Right. So this is what we have. We have forward biasing and reverse biasing. Now, when we proceed, we are going to look at, we are going to look at, or we are going to talk about uh, the diode as a rectifier. 
cation as a rectifier. Remember our definition, we said a rectifier is a device which converts AC quantity into DC quantity. Now, we are using a diode as a rectifier, right? Because we know that a diode allows current to flow through it in one direction. Therefore, it can be used as a rectifier, right? To convert uh, AC quantity into DC quantity. So, now, under diode as a rectifier, we can see I have half wave rectifier, right? And a full wave rectifier. So, these are the types of rectifiers that we are going to use in this chapter. A half wave rectifier and we also have a full wave rectifier. Now, let's check. The half wave rectifier, if you check here, I wrote single diode. So, what does it mean? It means that uh, a half wave rectifier only uses a single diode, right? So, if you see a rectifier where they use or a circuit, a power supply where they connected only a single diode, you know that is a half wave. When we move on to a full wave, a full wave, we have uh, two types of full waves. We have the one that uses uh, two diodes. Uh, usually, we use the central tap transformer for that one. And we also have uh, the one that uses four diodes. And we call it a bridge rectifier. The one that uses four diodes. So, the advantages and uh, disadvantages uh, in using either a half wave head or a full wave. So, we are going to find out about that as we proceed here in this chapter. Uh, uh, for now, let's just proceed and look at the second of a, a half wave rectifier. Remember, the, the whole purpose here or the purpose for this diode is to convert AC quantity into DC quantity. So, we have a half wave rectifier, so that's a half wave rectifier as I did mention up there that the half wave rectifier it uses a single diode. You can see this is a half wave rectifier. We have a full wave rectifier that uses two diodes. So I will just write so this is D1, this is D2, right? So we also have this is the transformer, right? These are the uh, primary windings. You can see these are the secondary windings. You have the diode and you have your the load that you want to supply. Right? Any device that uses DC, right? This load, uh, this voltage can be taken to uh, the voltage that is converted by this rectifier can be supplied to any device that requires DC current. Right? So uh, you can connect any device that uses DC as your as your load. Right. So this is half wave rectifier. So um, for full wave rectifier, we are uh, 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 the, the one that I have on the board is the one that uses two diodes. So we have D1 and D2. We also have the load, right? So we're using what? A central tap, right? A central tap transformer, right? So that's what we have. Alright, let's look, uh, let's start uh, by uh, talking about this half wave. Remember, the whole idea here is to convert AC quantity into, into DC quantity using one, a half wave or we can use a full wave, right? Alright, this is the primary, we know that this is the primary side of the transformer, this is the primary, the primary, the primary side and we also have the secondary side. So we have the primary and the secondary side. You can see these are the primary windings and you have the secondary windings. And the diode, which uh, is our rectifier, our rectifier is connected on the secondary side and the load, as you can see, according to the second, right? So, now, the voltage, the voltage to be converted, right? The voltage to be converted or the signal to be converted is then applied on the primary side, right? Now, what happens is that now it has to pass this stage, right? Where this transformer steps down that voltage, as you can see, we use the step down transformer. So the input signal, which is AC here, if it's a voltage, this is VAC. The AC is for alternating, right? 